Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and joining me today is the man, the myth, the legend, Peter Voog. And I'll give you a little bit of background on Peter. Peter's been running businesses kind of like I was um, since he was 15 and is labeled a leading authority for young entrepreneurs. Uh, he built an $8 million empire by age 27 and has trained close to 5,000 entrepreneurs. He's the founder of Game Changers Academy, which we'll talk about. Um, an author of the international bestseller, Six Months to Six Figures, and runs one of the top podcasts on iTunes, The Young Entrepreneur Lifestyle. Now, in this interview, I'm excited to talk about Peter's new book that he has, some of the things that came off of that, how he's used that to grow his business. And he's also uh, got a little project coming up um, that we'll be able to talk, talk about as well. So, Peter, welcome. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I'm excited, and I'm ready to be here. I know you... Uh have quite an impact yourself at a young age and I'm excited to help the entrepreneurs that are watching this and, and anyone that's really serious about taking their game to the next level and getting their book out there. So I appreciate it. No problem, man. No problem. Well, I want to start by going back to the beginning. So six months to six figures, obviously the launch was really, really successful. I mean, it put you on the map in a big way. You were already on the map, but I mean, it, it basically plastered Peter's face as the entire map. <laughs> and so let's talk about the, the, the beginning of that book and how that book came about. And I guess first off, where the idea came from and, and why you wanted to do a book and then the purpose behind that book. Yeah, good question. So, I mean, the book's been years in the making <clears throat> and where the book came from is it was my experience and it was based on the last six, seven years of my life to where I was stressed out and struggling and broke and literally dead broke. You know, we were just talking, I was talking in a mastermind to a friend and there's like dead broke when you have no money, like not even in your bank account. And then there's like people are broke, but they have like a savings. No, I was dead broke. And from the time I was dead broke to, uh, it was about five and a half months later, I was able to make a six figure income. And I didn't know it at the time, Chandler, but there was a framework that I, I took to get me to that. And then I did it in different industries as well as with the book industry as well. So that's, the book came from experience and, and that's where the title is from. But as far as before the book, I was doing well and was writing for some big publications. I had the academy, I had some other stuff. I was speaking worldwide. Um, I had the podcast, but the book, you're right, it took it to exponentially a whole new level to influence of success, of members, of exposure, of promotion, of speaking. So it's, it's amazing. I forgot what even you asked, but uh, well, that's, that's really what the book has done. It's been amazing. Got it. And what would you say was the main purpose behind taking on this book project originally? Yeah, I think the main purpose was to really cement in the industry that I'm the leading authority for young entrepreneurs, one and two, it's really to shift our culture. I, I feel like there was no book out there that really was tactical, hands-on, uh, new, comprehensive for entrepreneurs to how to make money online or offline as an entrepreneur quickly because I, I see so many people doing it the wrong way and taking too long and, and failing and struggling, which is not bad. You want to learn from your failures, but I feel like two reasons. One, I wanted to impact more people worldwide and two i wanted to build my business and brand and continue to shift our culture forward and i felt like this book that has no bs really the best way to get the six figures shortly could do that got it and so you you saw it a lot as an authority piece would you say also for leads or stuff like that or was it mainly Definitely. just the authority piece well it was both i i think with the authority piece if you have some intelligence comes leads like I can't keep up and the opt-ins are amazing. I mean, tons of opt-ins and I have different funnels set up. So I'm not sure if we're going to dive into that, but yeah, number one is for the authority and to really shift our culture forward. And it's for younger entrepreneurs too. It's to really build my business at a high level, opt-in wise, authority wise, leads wise, customers wise, things like that. Got it. And how long did it take you to write the book? Uh, well, a couple of years experiencing it, but actually sitting down and making a decision and writing it, I think six, six months, six to eight months. Got it. So six months. I know you do it figures. quicker, don't you? <laughs> I love it. But six months <laughs> to six figures and six months to a book, right? Yep, there we go. <laughs> so then from, so let's dive into the marketing and then we'll get into more of the back end <clears throat> side of things. Um, so for the marketing piece, I mean, I remember when this book was launching, I'd never heard of Peter Vu. And then all of a sudden, it's like, I can't freaking escape the guy. Like, he's following me around the internet, on every podcast, on everything. So <laughs> talk a little bit about that and what you guys did to launch the book. 
Yeah. So first I had to figure out a unique angle and I had to figure out what makes the book different. So I, I immediately came up with a, a marketing, I guess, idea on the 10 things that differentiate this book from every other book. And I put that everywhere on LinkedIn. I, I wrote an entrepreneur article about it and all these other things. So at first I had to figure out what makes the book different Chandler. I think people just want to launch a book and say, this is the game changer. This is the best book. That's what everyone says. But what are your, your tactical, your, your facts of why this book is different? So that's the first thing I did. I made sure I knew what was different. And I really, this is a topic that's not talked about enough. I really sold myself on how big, how big the book could be internationally. Most people, they think the book's going to get big and they're working with you and they're working with other teams, but they don't fully internally believe the book's going to be a game changer. So I had to sell myself on the book being a game changer first. And then I had to make sure that I found the right people to help me promote it. So I developed partnerships with high level people that I already knew and some that I developed. And then I reached out to a top notch team and you know the team to make sure it gets out there at a higher level. So it was a mix between having a unique angle and using all my platforms at once to make sure my book went out. I used all my platforms that I write for. I use my entrepreneur, uh, I have a lifestyle brand. I also have a, a clothing company. I also have a podcast as well as the academy. So I used every uh, platform and I made sure everything, everyone knew about it at once. So that's why you said, and I did all the podcasts. Uh, so I leveraged other people's platforms as well as my platforms in a very strategic way to all be released at the same time. Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, yeah. So you did entrepreneur.com. You did um, your your personal list, I imagine you did podcasts, you did like what else? Is there anything we're missing there? Um, I spoke. <clears throat> I, I spoke around in different uh, industries. I reached out to my previous company and 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 talked to some direct sales CEOs and got them to buy bulk books. I reached out to a lot of uh, team leaders that I knew that had a team of over a thousand and they bought books. So as far as like getting it out online, no, that was really the main things. The big publications the podcast. I wrote for some different publications I never have uh, before. I hit my email list and I developed partnerships with six or seven different big influencers where they can get it out to their list and get me on their podcast as well. And what would you say was the biggest needle mover for you? Whew, that's a tough one because there was so much at once. Um, are you talking about before I got with a team that marketed it for me or? Yeah. <clears throat> or, or just overall, like, what would you say moved, moved the most book sales? Whew, that's a tough one. I mean, can I say Amazon or no? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, as that, that would be a part or of it. That. But, like, do you yeah. think, like, was it the, the podcast? Was it the, like, which channels? Was it the writing, maybe the internal email list, the bulk book buys? Yeah, for me, it was my academy um, because I have so many very loyal members and they're all top-notch mixed with my email list. So it was my influence that I built. So it was my podcast and email list. Um, so if someone's sitting there not having, a, not, not a podcast, but my academy, if someone doesn't have an academy or an email list, it would be reaching out to someone that has one and getting them to partner with you and promote you, right? So that was the two biggest things. And then Entrepreneur did a piece on me, Chandler, where they did a video and everything. And I had a specific article focused on the book. And that's at, I think, 91,000 shares. So that helped <laughs> because For they promoted sure. my book in that so i don't know how many i sold from that funnel but that was at the same week so that helped too so probably what those the, what was the focus on that piece um six months of six figures and i i kind of broke down exactly what they were and my it. story it's oh, funny i was on the, i was on the video and they were trying to tell me to give me all the six steps in a two minute video and i've never done it that quick so i'm like on step two they're like all right two minutes is up you got to shorten it i'm like jesus so i had to after like 10 minutes i finally had to get it down to a two minute video of the six steps which you could find on YouTube under entrepreneur Peter Vug, but it was kind of funny, but yeah, that was a big, big Avenue. That's a great, uh, great testament of crystallizing your message, right? I'm, I'm sure there's been a lot of good things that have come out of having to do that. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yep. That's great. Well, and I want to get back to the, the, that piece in the six months to six figures here in a sec. Um, but what would be your recommendation? You kind of already gave one, Maybe you can say the same thing or it could be something different, but what would be your recommendation to people who don't have that audience? They don't have the podcast, the list to lean on. They're kind of just getting started. And it's their first book to, to have like a, a, an effect and really market their book. Yeah. Good question. I think they have to figure out, of course, their market and, and who they're helping. Second, they need to figure out what leading authorities or what uh, influencers are already connected or impacting that audience. 
and develop a relationship and a partnership with them to where you can reach that audience at a much quicker level than if you did it on your own. So it's, it's really leveraging other people's proven platforms. And it's, it's a numbers game too, Chandler. If, if they reach out to 10 people, six or seven might not get back to them. But the reality, so I have a story. One of my, um, someone on my academy, Houston Gunn, who you may have heard of, um, he has a book, The Success Principles, that's uh, how to be a millionaire by the time you graduate high school or something. And he reached out to 100 influencers that had the target market and one responded and it was Donald Trump. So just persistence is key. And he was able to endorse the book and help them get it out there. So it's just making sure that you define who your audience is. Like my audience is not single mothers, right? My audience is younger entrepreneurs. So I'm like, okay, who has a big influence on young entrepreneurs? Oh, Brian Tracy does. Oh, Grant Cardone does. Gary Vaynerchuk does. You do, right? So I would reach out strategically to those people to see how you can A, add value, B, see what it would take for them to promote your book in a strategic way as well, whether it's an opt-in page, whether it's an email to the list, whether it's an article, a feature, a podcast, whatever. Got it. Love that. Now let's take a step back um, to the entrepreneur.com article, but then also to the name of the book because the name, the hook is better than a lot I've heard in a really long time. Like there's not many book titles that you instantly get it. Six months to six figures. Like you hear that book title. There's no question what that book's about. <clears throat> so how did you come up with that hook and what, like what went into that? Cause it's really good. Good question. And I will tell people it's a headache. And if it's not a headache and it's easy, it's, it's, it's not really worthwhile. So it took me a while and it was going to be six months or 12 months to six figures. I was at uh, one of my mentor's houses with Hal. Hal is the one me, Hal, and some other people were together brainstorming. So have a sharp team around you to help you. That's the first tip. <clears throat> but we were thinking about those, those watching Hal, Hal Elrod, right? Yeah, Hal. Oh, I, do I just say Hal? I, I assume people don't. <laughs> exactly. Me I too. Hal Elrod, the one that died for six minutes and he can't remember anything. Um, so... I was at my mentor's house and we were thinking about it and we just, we kept brainstorming and brainstorming and figuring out ideas. And I realized I looked at my income reports from when I was broke and to the, to when I made the six figures and I was looking at the income reports and breaking it down. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I did it within five and a half months. So that's immediately, I'm not going to do five months to six figures. I'm like, that sounds, doesn't sound right. Doesn't flow. So I decided six months to six figures and that's really how it came about is a lot of headache, a lot of brainstorming and the right people around me. And then just continuing, we wrote down 20 different ones and we're like, no, that's no, that, not that one. That one stands out. That one stands out. This one doesn't. And then I finally got six months to six figures and I surveyed a couple people that were influential to me, probably 20 people that I knew in my circle of influence. And that's the one that everyone chose as well as me to make it uh, the official book cover or the official book title. So that's kind of the pro it wasn't really a specific process to be honest man I just a lot of headache and figuring out what my unique proposition was that very few people can actually say. And this was after the book was written? Yeah. Got it. And when you came up with that 6 months to 6 figures was it an instant like that's it yep. or was it still after surveying people? Um, it was, I, I thought that was it, but there was a couple other ones that I can't remember now what they were that I was like, ah, I like those two, but that was the one unanimous for me. And then I just wanted to make sure. So people were agreeing that's the best uh, title. And by the way, I, I had a hunch that it was going to be something six figures quickly because that's what the book was about is the framework of how to make money regardless of the economy, regardless of your age, whether you have money or not. So I knew the premise and the framework. So I didn't want to hold my writing of the book because it not have a title. So I think people are all gung ho. Like I got to have a title and everything before I start my book. I don't know if you promote that or hopefully you just tell them to no, no, I don't. <laughs> Shit, start working and then you'll figure out the damn title. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's like they'll spend hours and hours and hours. Mm -hmm. And then what we always talk about is you try to write your way to the title. Like once you have a title, you, you start writing, you can't free flow with your writing. Cause you're like, Oh, that doesn't fit the title. It's like, so true. So do true. it the other way around, like write your way to the title. And at some point the title will just come up or you'll have yep. to spend some time after and just really say, what's this book about? But it's yep. after the book's already done. Right. Yep. And, and I looked at a lot of other books and I studied a lot and did my due diligence. I think people sometimes they, they freak themselves out or they overthink it where you just have to have a strategy to where you have people that can connect with you. You can think about your unique strengths and, and after you write so much of the book, it's going to come to you. So that, that's kind of what it was.
Absolutely. No, no specific structure, but that's how it happened. Got it. Now let's let's talk about this because a lot of people can, you know, maybe do the launch almost to the point that you did, but then boom, next thing you know, they're they're falling off the charts. But your books had some serious staying power. Like it stayed at the top of the charts for a long time. So what would you attribute that to? Because you had the good rise. Like what would you attribute that to? And then also maybe follow up on that is what has that sales curve looked like? Yeah, good question. And I, I'm I'm amazed and humbled by it sells every every day. I look at the the create space and I look at the Kindle. It, it's going crazy, like over a hundred plus still now every day. That's not counting the hardcovers, just Kindle with the hardcovers and and the bulk buys. It's crazy. So I think the first thing is you really have to write a book that creates a movement. I'm sure you promote that that shifts something they do every day. Like how's Miracle Morning? Mine. It shifts something they do daily, so it totally shifts their mindset. So you have to have a good book. I don't care what anyone says. You have to have a book that is different and it's somewhat of a movement that it helps them and inspires them, but it also gives them tactical action steps. I think when someone reads it and they see, oh, this actually helped me, that helped. I think number two is I took the opposite of the approach of most people where I've read tons of books and there is a lot of fluff with not as much tactical, comprehensive, straightforward information. So I wanted to write a book that was very no BS, straightforward, that said things that other books wouldn't say or people were scared to say because it might offend people. I took that as it's my obligation to write about this because I feel like it's the best way to get people to take action. So that's another key. The, the cover is really important, how the cover looks, right? But I think in my book, I think I have a copy. So right here, Chandler, I put in the back or in the front, one thing I did that helped was pass it. This book is given to blank because I care about your greater success. I've had over a hundred people say they've given multiple copies just because of that. They wanted to give it out. And then at the end, I, I took this from Seth Godin. You can even take this. I said, one last thing, I ask for a favor. If you got anything out of this book, if you took notes, if it shifted your thinking or inspired you at all, I'm hoping you'll do something for me. I'm giving you some inside information. Uh, give me a give a copy to somebody else. Ask them to read it. Let them know what's possible for them if they really value their dreams and goals over their excuses. We need them. We need you. Please spread the word. Thank you. So this is the last thing they see. And I've had people when I'm in groups that have they've read my book. I said, yeah, because of that last page, I went and bought ten and gave them out. So that's another key. Third is I made sure that I consistently wrote about it and everywhere I did podcasts and was speaking, I talked about my book. So it was, I wanted omnipresence where everyone knew about it and it just kept creating a movement and it kept going and kept going. And then Entrepreneur talked about it, Inc.com, Business Insider and all these publications. And I think now it's just growing because it's out there in so many places and I've sold thousands of bulk copies to companies that with the marketing inside it and with the, the strength of the book and how no BS it is, it's, it's very, Chandler, it's very based off facts and experience and I, I give all relevant information to what works now, not 10 years ago. And I think people really appreciate that. So that's really, um, I also ask my academy members to, to share the book and, and to give reviews. So I think it's crazy. The, the book has, I think, almost 300 and almost 400 reviews, 360. And then my Audible has, I think, 450 reviews in, in, in eight weeks. So it's crazy how that happens. But yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Wow. So it sounds like you built a lot of virality into the yeah. book by getting people yeah. to share it. Definitely. It mixed with in, what's in the book to make them share it as well as the outer uh, promotion and, and consistent marketing of it as well. So it's kind of a combination. And it sounds like you just put out the audio book eight weeks ago, so that was more recent? Yeah. And what sparked that? Um, well, I wanted to, that's what my team had for me is I think five or six months later put out the Audible and I did that and yeah, it's crushing. I think it's at seven, 7,500 copies, Audible. And that's pretty big when it's only been eight weeks and there's 400 something reviews. So I, it's a short, it's very tactical, no BS. So I think the Audible just sells itself because I'm yelling at the, at the mics half the time. So you recorded getting, it yourself? Passionate. Yeah, which was hell and was a bitch. I don't know if I could say that. Um, was that a bad word? No, that's fine. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure. Some people are like going crazy on, on Hangouts. Some people are like very conservative. So I did it myself. I talked to five or six best-selling authors um, and, and they said some of them wish they would have done it themselves. Some of them wish they could get it uh, recorded. So either it was pros and cons of both. 
I want to do it myself because I a lot of people are used to my voice and on my podcast and hear me. So I just personal preference and and also I didn't want to give any percentage out. So I wanted to kind of get my passion out there. Got it. And did you do straight from the script or did you do some ad libbing? Ad lib. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Pretty much on the script, but a little a little bit where I had something else to say that was on my mind. I think maybe that's why people appreciate the Audible. I don't know. Yeah, I, that's always interesting who the people who do that because there's some some people will only buy a, a, an author's audiobook because they know I forget who it is. It might be Gary Vaynerchuk or so, I think that's who I've heard it, it, it is. But like people like that who they want to hear it because they want to hear the rants inside yep. the book too, or the you know the ad libbing and the the stuff that you wouldn't get just by reading it. Exactly, and that and that's what I wanted to do. And I, I had I have a lot of passion and and compassion with it when it comes to the subjects in the book so that's why i was kind of like there's some things that i definitely want to get off my chest that i think would help people so got yep. it now was there was there anything else that we haven't mentioned so far that you think led to keeping the book just at the top of the charts well to be honest chandler i'm very big on only focusing on my circle of genius so i didn't put a ton of effort because i have a, a great team for my book launch, for the after, I have a guy that does visuals. Another big key is creating a lot of visuals with quotes on it and putting those everywhere, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Google Docs. You're really, you're really good at that. Yeah, I see Google those all the time. Yeah, and I don't, exactly. So the biggest key is I had a team that was better than me at that, that had experience. And that was my weakness is I didn't know how to launch a book and get the book out there after. So I hired a team. So that's what I did. I don't know everything and I'm just being blunt. I want to focus on creating content and speaking and adding value and not all the marketing stuff. So that's other people's specialty. So I recommend finding people, whether it's your team or a team that can actually help you take your book to a whole new level. Um, but the first step is writing a good book. Cool. Now let's talk about bulk buys because that's a, I've heard you say that several times and it seems like that might have been a big part of it and a big part of continuously selling the book. Um, how do you do that and what have those numbers been like? Yeah, so you do that by hustling your ass off and, and making a target list of your top 20 people that have influence over your audience. That's the big key. You're leveraging other people's proven platforms they've spent years to build and it's mutually beneficial because they're giving their team something that motivates their team and they're getting more flexibility out of it as a leader because their team is more motivated. I make money, they're happy, everyone wins. So you have to understand it's a mutually beneficial thing. So I reached out to the top 20 people I knew from my past that have built a sales team or have influence over a lot of people. And I literally called them and I said, I'm selling bulk copies. I have a certain amount in my office. Um, how many do you want to buy? I kind of assumed the sale. And once they researched and saw the book, or if they already knew me, a lot of them just bought it. So 100, 500, 200, like someone just bought 100 last week to give out to people, which is pretty cool. So I don't, what question are you specifically asking? How would I call them or how would I get the list or what? Was it, I'm just, is it mostly companies? Is it mostly, are you doing speeches off the back of them? And then also I'm curious to know, as you were just saying that, what's the most that anyone else, that anyone's bought? Uh, 500. 500. Cool. Which is, I mean, I'm probably going to sell, I want to sell a thousand or more, but 500 and I haven't really pushed. I need to be thinking bigger and start selling 10,000 dollar bulk orders right so i had i had uh five thousand i think and I, I don't have any left i have a couple boxes probably like 160 left so i've sold quite a bit in bulk um so i think that the week after it launched chandler is when i was on the phone hustling getting a lot of bulk orders so when the all the bulk orders went out they read it and they spread the word and they spread the word so that's kind of how it's continuing to grow um and i have advocates that i also have a six months to six figures facebook community that started a call where there's, I think there's 10 people on the call and they talk about how they can distribute the book every week as well. So I'm trying to get a community, like, you know, how house is crazy. The miracle morning community. It's, it's like half the world's on that community. It's right? insane. Like my cousin, my mom's on, I didn't even know. No, I'm just kidding. There's <laughs> a lot of people on that thing. So that's what I'm trying to build so it can consistently promote itself. But yeah, bulk is just having a strategic approach, being genuine and, and, assuming the sale and calling people that have a need for the book in bulk for their people. So I've called companies and individuals that have sales teams. So I called some previous uh, direct sales managers that have a team of a hundred and they bought a hundred copies. Then I, I sell to companies that want to buy 250 of them for their employees. 
um, and things like that. So I can't say certain names, but yeah, it depends on what they need and, and how big their team is. I'm not going to call someone that I don't know has a team. Hey, you want to buy 50 for your family, right? Just, you have to be strategic on who you're reaching out to. But yeah, I don't think people, do people do that often, Chandler? Do they reach out and do bulks or not really? I, I think it's an untapped, like it's a high leverage, but untapped activity. Like if you want to sell 5,000 books during launch week, like what's the easiest way, right? Get 10 people to buy 500, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever, you know, like I think it's untapped, but it, it, but really powerful because a lot of people just don't, don't understand the mechanics or don't think that big. That's probably what it really is, is they're not thinking that big. And it's, it's, it goes back to the door to door kind of philosophy where people don't want to reach out consistent people because rejection. But the reality is if you have more courage and confidence in your book than you do, if you value your book over being rejected, you're not going to care. If you think more about being rejected and don't want to get your book out there, then what are you doing? Right? So I just had a lot of faith in my book and confidence that I knew it was something that was needed that I would get on the phone and make 50 calls in a row because I didn't care if someone's like, no, sorry. At least they heard about the book. And I still would send them a copy anyways, Chandler. So when I'm connecting with people, like I've sent copies to everyone, Seth Godin, Tim Ferriss, uh, David, like I, I sent one to David Seitman Garland, if you know who that is. Um, mm -hmm. And we connected last week for about an hour, but it's always cool to have someone. It's such a great marketing piece. It's the best business card on the planet. Like if you don't have a book, you're crazy. I recommend everybody having a book because not only is it a marketing piece, but it's such a great business card to where instead of giving someone a card, here's my book. It's instant credibility. So bulk book was just another avenue for me to get it out there at a higher level. Love that. Now, was there what, what do you do to incentivize um, these bulk copies? Are you giving them a discount? Are you giving discount. bonuses? What do you do there? Yeah, so I could pull up the website. I have, I literally created, I, my team created a website for it. So I'll, I'll go over it. But I also give them, um, sometimes I'll speak. Like I have a company that I'm speaking for uh, in Vegas, 1,500 people. And it's in front, it's at the Mandalay Bay. I'm not sure if you've heard of the event. It's called Thrive. And I'm, they're buying bulk copies. So I'm speaking, I'm getting a speaking fee and buying bulk copies as well, which is pretty cool. So if, if they go to sixfiguresbook.com, there's a success package. They can model this too. Um, where is it? Buy bulk. So I did specific packages to where they could get hardcovers along with a blueprint that I created along with some uh, game changer wristbands. And that's a certain amount, of, a certain price. I also did like, let me look, I got to find, oh, here it is. Bulk. Okay, so they could get as little as 25 and then they can buy 250 copies on here. So the ones I sold 500, I personally called, but I've had, I think, seven or eight orders channeled from this website to where they just bought bulk. I didn't even know who they were. So they bought either 100 or 250. So 25, 35% off of retail for 25 copies, 40% off retail for 50 copies, 50% for 100 and 55% for 250. So that's kind of the, the structure of it. And of course, you're still going to make a ton of money for self-publishing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's that, that's a. Those are some beautiful margins. Still, still you know, it's funny. Oh my gosh. Even at those fifty percent off of retail, is you're probably still making two, three times what someone would be making if they were working with a publisher and sold you're, it at retail price. Oh, for sure. And you're very big on self-publishing, correct? Yeah. So I was talking to a, a New York Times best-selling author, probably five months ago. And I was talking to him. He's like, how's the book doing? I see it's blown up. I'm like, yeah, it's crazy. I'm like, I didn't think this much money was possible, like writing a book this fast. Cause the money I made within two months cash was unbelievable. Right. And he's like, really? He's like, did you self publish? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, that's why I'm like, yeah, exactly. So I was talking to him. I'm not going to say who it is, but it's funny that the attitude was like, yeah, that's, that's definitely the new thing. And I think more people should do that because if you have the right team, because if you don't have anybody and you're doing it yourself, that's a little harder, right? But if you have the right team and the right guidance, it's easy. But yeah, I've, I've made more than some authors that have sold way more books than me in a lot longer time because I self-published. So I don't think there's any other way to go. I don't care what the advance is. I, I completely agree. I think the, you know, I used to be in the camp of like self-publishing, no matter what, doesn't matter, screw the publishers. You should never do it. If you do it, you're an idiot. Like I used to be on that far, far end of thing, but like I, I've started to see a little like, okay, if I'm going for just big, big, big time, like Gary Vaynerchuk, want it to be all over world, all over the world in different languages. Like 
like sometimes that can still be good. But then we like I've had interviewed here Justin Mayers. I don't know if you know him. He did the the traction book, startup guide to uh, to getting customers, and they sold thirty thousand something copies or already forty thousand copies self published, and then they got a huge. Um, deal with a publisher to where they just it was so much they couldn't turn it down and then now they're going to relaunch the book they've got an advance that would have paid for several years worth of copies and then they can get extra distribution and whatever yep. but even then it's like you can self-publish first and then move into that yeah exactly and that's what I think people should do regardless of self-publish I've had some people reach out to me and even entrepreneur um, has a publishing company as well and so, so we'll see how it goes but yeah I'm, I'm very big on and if you have a good back end, I think that makes sense if you want to publish because if you have such a strong back end, you're fine. Like the Dan Kennedy crowd has a nice back end and they're not self published, but at the same time, I think they started self published. So you're right, you can do both. Yeah. So you want to go in the back end? Yeah, let's see. That's a perfect segue. Um, let's let's move into that. So what what has this book done for your business? Yeah, so it's grown it exponentially. First, like always, you have to make sure you you connect with people that have already had great backend products. I'm 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 big on making sure your circle of influence is very strategic and intelligent, and you're always connecting with people playing the game at a higher level that have been to where you want to go, so you can cut your learning curve in half. So I was around a, a great group of people that have already made hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of dollars uh, on the back end of a book. So that was six months to a year beforehand. So that's the first step. You can't just write a book and then two weeks later like, oh, I'm gonna have this back end product and make millions. You have to be strategic, right? So I had a lot of different things. I had a, a lead page for a productivity training. I also had my academy and my academy is very exclusive. It's invite only. So you have to apply or you can do a trial, right? And I've had every day there's multiple trials, but in order to get accepted, you have to apply. So they apply, then they connect with me or my team. And uh, they pay for usually year contracts, couple year contracts as well. And that's going extremely well. Also speaking, I've got booked to speak numerous places. Um, and there's a lot of other, I had four or five different things set up, but my lead pages, as far as my, um, my main bonus page that gets leads, that I think that's got eight or 9,000 emails already and almost close to 10. And it leads them to all these bonuses and then they get connected to my summit which I do once a month and, and close people on the year contracts and some of them are lifetime access as well. So yeah, it's grown crazy as far as customers go. My email list is going crazy and I'm very big on adding value for a while before asking for anything. I want to give free content that's better than most people pay for. So when they get my content, they get some great interviews I've done with like Gary Vaynerchuk and Grant Cardone and the vice president of the Clippers. They get some of my best interviews along with my blueprints as well. So you got to have a strategic. So right here, I don't know if you, Love this but right here it says the most incredible free gift ever visit six months six figures book for 785 worth of money making information so once they go there they're put through a sequence so yeah and you can ask detailed questions now Dude, but i want to classic i love that classic uh dan kennedy line yep. right there right? i was gonna i was gonna <laughs> say you know where i got that from oh, i'm all yeah. about copying i copy genius man that's that's what i do that's what, you know, it's funny. We had Hal on one of these interviews and he said, Peter Vug, I swear, he says, you know, I just come up with these awesome ideas and then he implements them way better than I do. <laughs> He's like, he takes it and just runs with it, runs for the hills. He would say that. It. That's funny. <laughs> it's funny. We're best friends. We, we're supposed to mastermind every Friday, Chandler, and this year. And it's been like four masterminds because we're never in town. So when he's here Friday, I'm gone. When I'm gone, he's here. It's like, we're supposed to mastermind. I don't know what the hell's going on. We're always gone. Now this Friday, I'm here and he's in Cabo. It's like, Jesus, we cannot get <laughs> I'm in the same town in like six months. And you guys so, live in the same town. So. Exactly. He's like eight miles from me, yeah. but whatever. He's a good guy. I love Hal. Yeah, he's a great guy. Great guy. A lot of energy. <laughs> yeah. So Hal, so, keep giving me ideas and I'll keep taking them and implementing them faster. I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, love it. Now, obviously you made a ton of money off of the book. Have you eclipsed that in the back end yet? Whew, I think it's I think it's probably even. Mm -hmm. To be honest. And it's gonna get lopsided to where I'm making a lot more on the back end as well with the speeches coming up. So to answer your question, I haven't tracked that, which I'm, I'm glad you say that because I do want to now track it specifically. I know exactly what the book has made, but I haven't uh, tracked the back end as far as after the book sales. So it's probably even and it's going to eclipse it in the next month or so.
as far as back end. Within a few months, it's already, even with making a ton of money off the book, it's already almost even. And what do you expect that curve to go like moving forward? As far as like the curve of my my income from the opt-ins and from the back end or from the book or both? Yeah, like it, both in comparison. So good news. I think the book's going to stay steady and I'm going to have specific times in the year. Here's a little tip. I'm going to do probably four times a year, a huge book promotion for the book. I'm going to email all my lists and have all my influencers email out and give a huge discount, like probably four times a year. So that'll go way up. And I'm just going to do a revised version of actual, I have three case studies already from people making six figures from the book, which is cool. I'm going to do a case study as well. Um, so I think it should stay steady. And then I think the back end is just going to continue uh, going up and up as the products and the opt-ins and the, and the sequences get better and better and more tested. But here's the cool thing. I have a new book coming out as well. Um, in the next month or so. So that'll be my second book in six months. So it's going to be two books to six months to six books. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, that'll but be the third you're book. Right, though. It's funny. You talk about creating a book quicker. The next book was so much faster. When you write your first book, the next book is a game changer because it's so much quicker. And all the mistakes I made on this book, people might say, mistakes, it's doing well, it looks good. You're going to make mistakes on your first book. And the reason they join, I think, your program too is to not make as many mistakes so they don't have to, they can cut their learning curve. But yeah, now it's easier. I'm taking everything I did, didn't do well on that book and into the next book and having a higher level launch and making sure that I have an amazing high converting backend that's extremely strategic connected to the book and then a backend after that and a couple tiers. So yeah, my second book's going to be even bigger. I'm excited cool. about that. And I want to dive into that second book here in just a second. Um, a couple questions before we get to that. Um, out of the out of all the things that are happening on the back end and income streams there, which one's has been the biggest? Oh, on the back end? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Probably my academy. I have a I have an academy that has three tiers, the elite, the platinum, and the basic. So the academy has been, been the best. And then speaking as well. So I get a decent amount to speak and, and I've spoken and I have a couple booked up. So probably the the uh, the academy and then the speaking. Got it. And I mean, and then obviously too, you've got a you you said you build an email list of what ten thousand people already just off of the book. Eight, eight, yeah, eight, and I have over that total with my email list. Cool. Quite a bit. So just from the book, yeah, I need to. It's getting good, and then we're gonna try to go for I think three or four thousand within a week on this next one. Love it. Now, what's yeah. um what's been an unexpected revenue stream that's come off the back of the book that you said, Hey, whoa, I didn't, I didn't expect that. Oh, that's a good question. Good question there. That's a Thanks. Um, <clears throat> affiliate and, and, uh, I think partnerships, I get people every single day, not I had two this morning wanting, it's funny. I talk about mentorship a lot and I talk about mentorship in my podcast and book. So the first question I ask is, will you be my mentor? I'm like, yeah, I wish, right? but that's about as scalable as, as working at Wendy's. So, <laughs> so I don't love that quote. <laughs> yeah. So you're probably going to quote that on Facebook, right? Here's what, no, I'm just mm -hmm, for sure. So, that's the, that's the only thing I'm going to quote in this interview. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. No, actually that might, that might attract some people to the uh, hangout. So it's when people reach out, I now have a team of people that I can refer right? That want that service, whether it's mentorship, whether it's infusion soft, whether it's lead pages, whether it's uh a program that I feel helps them, a podcast program if they're wanting to get into podcasting. So I have all this influence and all these eyeballs on me now, Chandler, that I have a lot of affiliates and partners are set up where that's a great amount of money a month too that I never even thought, I thought about it, but I didn't think it would be this big this fast. So that's an extra good amount per month. Glad Got you it. asked that. Love Does that, that make sense? Kind of like yeah. the unexpected affiliates, yeah. And that's, that's from both the list and from people who reach out and say, hey, will you be my mentor? Or hey, I want to do this six months to six figures things, but I need help like an infusion yep. soft or exactly like that. What's, yeah. your be what's your best resource for blank? And then now I have, I mean, when I get the same question 52 times, right? I usually do it when I get the same question twice. I make sure I systemize and create a blueprint for that or a, a, like an information page or a resource page. So now when I get those, then I give that out. Hey, you'll get a discount. Go to 99design slash blank and you'll get a discount um, because I've given a lot of people their service and you can get, I get affiliate code or I get a, a fee as well. Awesome. Now yep. let's, let's step into um, the next book. Tell us a little bit about that. So the next book is a, a book that's 
a framework for entrepreneurs that have sales teams or that want to really inspire an impact at a higher level. So it's called the Entrepreneur's Blueprint to Massive Success. And it's the 30 most powerful game changing strategies that you have to know as an entrepreneur in order to get to the top 5%. So what we did is for my podcast, we have 120 something episodes so far and the 30 most downloaded, most listened to, most popular, we took those 30 and then I took them, we got them transcribed and I made sure that I took those 30, created tactical action steps behind them. And then I surveyed uh, all my list and did some research and made sure that we put all the stats and facts in the book uh, after each chapter. So now after each chapter, there's gonna be like three or four action steps, it's like an activity guide. And what's cool about it is they can go to any chapter and it's not relevant to the chapter before where they can learn a new lesson. And it's in a teachable framework, Chandler, to where when they learn it and implement it and see results, they can literally teach it to their sales team right afterwards. It's very, very tactical. And uh, yeah, I'm excited because I feel like if you can learn and master these lessons, they're all, a lot of them are focused on time management, productivity, and, and really how to maximize your income and build a great lifestyle while doing it. Everything revolves around that theme. So yeah, I'm excited. That's kind of the, the gist of it where it's just 30 lessons that they need to know along with action steps and call outs and thought provoking questions to get them to build a lifestyle on their terms because I really feel like there's nothing more valuable than living life your own way on your terms when you want. And sadly, so many people aren't doing that. So I wanted to get a book out there that was a guide on how to do that, but then how to teach others afterwards. Got it. And how long did it take you to write that book? A um, couple months, probably two or three. So, so I split the, up the pro dude in a couple in a couple more books I'm gonna write books in weeks. <laughs> oh yeah, right? that's that's when you're really well. That's when you're really rocking and rolling. I'm curious, why so quickly to the next book? I just you want to you want me to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. I realize how amazing books are for not only your brand, not only for making money, but for impacting people internationally. So I wanted I just wanted to keep it going. I, and I know most people say like leave the book for a year or whatever or two years or you can release another one. I know John Maxwell releases, has 80 books and Brian Tracy. So I wanted to just get as many uh, people to know about me as possible. I want to be out there, man. I'm not worried about an exact strategy of how many books per 10 years. I just want to get out there and help as many people as possible and really help create game changers. So that's why. I, I knew it was very lucrative. I had some thoughts on my mind. Uh, a lot of people from this book asked me, hey, you should talk about this. Hey, you should write about this. I took all the feedback, all the experience, all the negative reviews, positive reviews, all the things that I felt like this economy and these young entrepreneurs needed to thrive and put it in the new book. Got it. And what are some things that you're doing differently with this new book from the first book? Yeah, we're being a lot more strategic with the the back end. And we, we were decently strategic with the, the, the back end of this, but we're being a lot more strategic. And I'm working with... Um, Austin, who you know, and there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more, um, I guess, strategy long term for it as well. And I'm also going to do a marketing, uh, the same thing, but just up it a couple notches. And instead of doing six podcasts, having launched that week, I'm going to do 12 or 15. Instead of having eight people promote it, I'm going to have 20 or 25 affiliates promote it. So it'll be just just everything at a higher level. And how are you going to do that so quickly? Um, off of the heels of this last book because don't you feel like you, you you used up a lot of your asks like for the last book? Yeah, and I think that's a good question. Um, we're just going to be strategic. I have a team working on it and luckily the last couple of years I've developed a lot of connections with people that I've just added value to them for years. So we're going to reach out to them and probably be different people than this book, but we're just going to have a strategic approach and ask what we can do for them as well and get it promoted that way. So that's really it is, is making sure that we are strategic with the people we ask and then what the approach is as well. And I don't have any fear of asking too much in this economy. You, you got to get what you want and you got to have so much belief. You have to have an unshakable confidence and belief in what you're doing that you don't care what others think if you're genuine and you're authentic. So I'm just going beast mode once again and getting it out there because I, I know how much it impacts entrepreneurs. And it's needed at, at such a high level with education, how it is, with parents doing a crappy job. And I'm just being blunt with the news with, oh, my God. And there's coaches that haven't actually gotten results. It's a, it's a mess. So I want to help shift our culture as you're doing as well 
and help these young entrepreneurs that don't have the guidance or don't have the right mindset. So I figure two books is better than one if they're both strategic and they both help. So that, that's really my, my thought. I want to be a leading authority and I want to get out uh, my word at a higher level in more countries and internationally. Awesome. And what's one thing from the first book that you will not be doing on the second book? Who? How many more of these questions do you have? You're making me think. <laughs> not too many. I'm just kidding. Um, I probably won't do as much bulk myself. I will have some of my team do the bulk selling. I won't do it myself. Um, but that's about it because I have a lot going on and I'm traveling quite a bit and things like that. So I'm making sure, uh, Channel, that every single thing I do is scaled. Not everything I did in this book was scaled. I had to do a lot of stuff. I had to follow up and do certain things. Everything in this book is going to be scaled. That's going to help me have more free time later. And I was talking to David Seitman Garland about this, where everything that you have to do, you need to make sure that it multiplies your time later and creates more free time for you. So that's, that's the focus of this book that I didn't have as much in the other book. And do you have any examples of, of, of things? You got bulk buys. What are some other stuff? Um, well, the program is automated that I'm selling. That's going to be evergreen and it's going to be repeat. There's going to be a crazy promotion the first seven days. That's never going to happen again. Then that's evergreen. Um, and I'm not doing speeches. I'm going to refer people that speak. I don't, I'm not going to speak. I haven't really told many people this. Uh, speaking is great. It might be good for people on the back end, but I'm not going to do as much speaking because that's still, you have to travel and, and all these things. I have some other ideas going on that I'm still playing with that are going to be, I think more lucrative than speaking. Um, but what else? I mean, I think that's really it, man. The same stuff I talked about and, and anything that took my time to do, I'm just delegating, deleting, or or figuring out a team that can take care of it. And now are there any mistakes that you made on the first book that you said, hey, learn my lesson. I'm going to apply that to the next one. Uh, yeah, I think I put too many websites at the end. Like I think people, I, I think I put like four or five and and like the first two are like getting a crap load of traffic and the last like 97 aren't <laughs> so maybe i don't know do you what do you recommend do you recommend putting like one call to action or like a bunch of different websites yeah i would say one or you know at the most two, like three, two or three maybe yeah. three yeah but it's like in that that would be like if you have tracks right so like if you're a game changer that's already gotten started go to my game changer elite if mm. you're looking for like the very basics go to this site or and then like maybe something else oh, it's, it's connected it's connected yeah, yeah exactly so it's so all focused mistake. on your stuff i think that's my mistake because i have quite a bit of, of resources for them as well when i should have just done now the first one's getting the most opt-ins of course and the second one's getting the second most so people that, definitely are those are the ones that you want them to be what do you mean are the oh are yeah that's, the that's the two i want the most yeah okay, good 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 so that's probably what I'll do is, is lower that and, and simplify it a little bit. I'm also going to give them an action guide that they can get separately where they can just fill it out that, that my team's creating as well. So that's something else that I think will be cool that I didn't do on this one. I didn't have an action guide with it. I just had them fill out in the book. They didn't get a guide with it. So that's what I'll do with this new book. Did you have a call to action in the beginning of the book? Um, no. No. Oh, that's a good, I think I have one in my new book. I just have book Peter to speak. So that, I don't know if that's a call to action. Would you count that as one? Like, are you talking about like, go to this email? I would say that's a call to action that like 95, 99% of people can't do. So they would write it off because they can't book you to speak. Um, but I would definitely, we noticed that with our books is where we put an opt in. We had it in the back and then we moved it to the front and it was through the roof. Cause wow. the sad reality is like, what is it? What's, what is it like? It's something like 70, 80, 90% of people who start a book never finish it. So they never even see those call to actions. Um, so if you can get them in there and then you can feed them resources that actually get them to finish the book, um, then you have a much better of chance of retention of them getting through your material and of opt-ins and all those things. We did that. And then we we're personally fans of audiobooks. We sell yeah. them on Audible and all those things as well. But we've seen audio and video convert really, really, really well. Um, so we always do a call to action to audio or video in the front of a book. And so it can Good be idea. A in the scenes. It could be an audio book. It can be a free video mini course that's on the book. There's all kinds of stuff you can do there. I love that. That's a good idea. And have you told Austin these? <laughs> yeah, we, we brainstorm on this stuff all the time. Okay, good. T tell him to make sure we do that. Um, now, as far as, what was I going to tell you that we were just, oh yeah, the video for my, for my uh, bonus page that they go to now, there's no video. I'm adding a video. To, so I'm doing a lot more right. video with the new book. 
So that's one of my biggest changes is a lot more video, uh, more simplicity at the back. And then like you just said, I'm going to add it to the front so they can get resources right away. I really like that. So that's the biggest changes. Great. It's all about Love adapting that, and adjusting. Love that. Well, Peter, we've covered a ton of ground. Went all the way through the beginnings of the first book, how you marketed it, how you wrote it, the back end. We went into the next book, the mistakes, some comparisons. I mean, we're, we're both pretty rapid fire guys. So I'm yeah. really pleased with how much we covered in this. And thanks so much for coming on. And before, before we go here, what's the best place um, for people to go to find out more about you? Yeah, so they can go to uh, sixfiguresbook.com. That has a lot about me and the book and everything like that. They can also go to gamechangersmovement.com. That talks a lot about kind of the, the academy and, and, and everything about me that I've created. Um, and then they can follow me on Twitter, PeterVoog23. I love to connect on Twitter. So everyone that has Twitter, follow me, PeterVoog23. I'm going to be periscoping a lot. Um, and, and that's really it. LinkedIn, Facebook, I have the same uh, I have the same name. That's about it, Chandler. I appreciate you for making an impact and and helping a lot of people as well. So let me know if you need anything. No problem. And one last thing, what's with the 23? I got to know. Um, so there's about 10 things. I'll just give you a couple. Um, it's been my favorite number since I was little. It's my mom's birthday. I love Michael Jordan. I like LeBron James. So there's a lot of different ones. Yeah. Cool. I figured Michael Jordan maybe was. It has to somewhere. be. It has to be. <laughs> Somewhat Michael Jordan. Yeah. Awesome. Peter, thanks so much, man. Yeah, we'll talk.